Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Worship Online with us this morning, wherever you are. We're going to invite you to stand if you're able and if you want to, and uh, let's begin our worship together this morning. My great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. My gracious Master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the earth abroad, the honors of Thy name. So come on and see. Our anthem grow loud, there is one great Jesus. Jesus, the name that charms our fears, that bids our sorrow cease. Tis music in the sinner's ear, tis life and health and peace. He breaks the power of canceled sin, he sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean, his blood avail for me. So come on and sing out, let our anthem grow loud, there is Speaks and listening to his voice, new life the dead receive. The mournful broken hearts rejoice, the humble poor believe. Glory to God and praise and love be ever, ever given by saints below and saints above, the earth and earth and heaven. So come on and ring out, let our anthem grow loud, there is one great love, oh there's one. together. Lord God, we come together in our own ways to worship and praise your name. In this short time together, open our ears to hear your word and our eyes to see your vision for this place and our part within it. Teach us, hear our prayers, and enable us for service wherever you might take us. To your praise and glory. Amen. This is our 
This is our God So call upon His name He is mighty to save This is our God And this is the this morning that regardless of the trouble you're experiencing or the loneliness, he is mighty to save. He's mighty to be present. He's with you and is so glad to be reminded of that this morning in worship. And I pray that you leave with that hope today um, when you close out your window, your tab, that you know God is with you and he's mighty to save. Join us together as we affirm not only what we believe in who God is, but believe why we've joined together and that is with our vision statement. Could, so could you say that with us together this morning? We strive to be a Christ-centered church, a caring community growing deeper in faith, reaching out in love, and making a difference in the lives of our neighbors near and far. Amen. Amen. So good to have you this morning. It's a beautiful Sunday morning um, here as we film, and we're so glad that you have joined us today. Would you mind just dropping in your name, whether you're on Facebook or the platform, saying, hey, it's me. I'm here. Here's with who's who's with me and my PJs in the living room joined together. Uh, even if you want to put your animals, go ahead and put all your dogs. Um, we might a lot more time for Jessie because she's got quite a bit of dogs, so we'll let her do that this morning. Uh, but it's so good to have you uh, today. Go ahead and fill out that, uh, that Connect card, uh, whether you're on the platform. And uh, one of the ways that you could actually um, witness, maybe evangelize if you want to call it this morning, is if you're on Facebook, hit that Share button. That Share button allows you to share that you're watching or that you're joining with us together. It's just a way to tell people online, hey, I'm going to make Sunday morning important. I, I, there's a lot of things that you could be doing right now, sleeping in, uh, binge watching on Netflix, but you're going to say, hey, I'm, I'm telling my folks and my friends that uh, joining and worship together with my church folks is important. And so you can share that right now. Just pretty easy. Hit that share button or let people know that you're watching today. And that just says, hey, you know what? This is important. And I think God and my relationship with him and his church is vital 
And so I would encourage you to do that. Just a fun way uh, to maybe share your faith this morning online. So we're glad that you made it. We're glad that there are a lot of things going on in the life of the church. And you can actually follow along. We, we have a couple mass emails that go out um, during the week. Um, first, uh, first thoughts will go out um, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, it's, a little, it's a holiday, so I'm not sure which day, honestly. But you can subscribe to those. And there are some important announcements. One of those is that um, Pastor Clark's Zoom, Zoom Day School. Is that it, right? Zoom Day School? Zoom Day School uh, started this morning. That is in correlation with his new sermon series, The Ten Second Rule. So that is um, Sunday mornings at 10.15. If you missed this morning, that Zoom link are in those emails, the first ha- thoughts and the first happenings that go out this week. And so you can check on those and see what's going on. We encourage you to do that. Uh, in those emails, you'd also see that we are in need of some OMP drivers. We are in need of two drivers for our high school trip that's taking place in June. Uh, one of those drivers will be nine months pregnant during that time, so she cannot uh, fulfill that role, although I know she really, really wants to. So uh, maybe you've got some older kids at home uh, who are now with you. Send them my way. Or uh, maybe you enjoy missing five days of sleep. Call me because we can suffer together. <laughs> but it's a great time, and we need some adult drivers in June. So if you would love to do that and that kind of uh, sounds enjoyable or sounds fun. Maybe it's a different change of pace. We'd love to have you serve along with us. But uh, feel free to follow us on uh, Facebook and Instagram for more announcements. And uh, also just for a lot of things that we could be praying for right now. Amen. A lot of things are going on COVID-related. We want to continue for Joyce Concerns this morning to remember uh, Cheryl and Liam uh, as they have a COVID-19 diagnosis. want to pray that their sh- God's strength is with them. Continue to pray for the Atkins family, and thank you for all those who've been loving on them with meals and uh, letters of encouragement. We appreciate, they appreciate that, and uh, it, it's just a, a great ministry that a lot of you are being involved, just loving on people during this time. That's really the best thing that we could do. So uh, just with all the things going on, it's really appropriate this morning that our bishop would like to share just a quick word um, about just the, what's going on in our country and offer a prayer for us over our joys and concerns. So I'll now turn it over to our bishop. As the people called Methodist in Arkansas, is to be on our knees praying and confessing and repenting and to wade into the middle, in the midst of the polarization, to bring reconciliation. I've been with you over eight years now. And I know your character, and I know your heart, and I know your faith. And every time you pray, and every time you seek reconciliation, you are giving a glorious witness to the Lord, and you are planting seeds of hope. Pray with me. Lord, we give you thanks for the great reconciling your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We confess our own sin in how we view others and treat others. We confess our nation's failings in so many ways. And we seek your forgiveness, and we seek to live in a new way. So fill us with just the grace we need at just the time we need it and just the way we need it that we will be able to be reconcilers for Christ in a polarized and broken nation. We know that the coming days will be tense. We know there are threats of violence. We're not sure what's going to happen. But we know you, and we give you thanks that you are still God, Jesus is still Lord, and the Holy Spirit is still the Holy Spirit in all things, at all times. Amen and amen. Amen. You know, I think the bishop has really set a great tone for us this week. It's a big week in our nation as Inauguration Day is Wednesday, and I think we can do two things. We can continue to pray. Pray for our nation, pray for our leaders, um, pray for our new president, uh, pray over him and pray for him. 
And I think we can also continue to give, um, not only of our tithes and offerings, but give of our time when it's uh, asked of us, give of our words of encouragement when it's needed, and give of our hope in people and in circumstances where, as it's so easy to cast doubt and condemnation and criticism and the glass is always half empty, to be a people of hope and to give. And so as we pray over our offerings before we continue to worship, I want to thank you for giving uh, to the ministries of this church and to continue to allow, to allow um, those things to continue to happen. And so we're thankful for that opportunity to worship with our tithes and offerings. Uh, you can give uh, in the mail via the web. And uh, yesterday I texted my offerings. So super easy. I love it. So you can text in the offering. <clears throat> it takes a few seconds, really just a few seconds to, to give online. Um, but we're so thankful that you are so present with us. And let's pray over our tithes and offerings and give our joys and concerns in our nation to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we are th thankful for the opportunity to come this morning and meet together. Lord, we ask that uh, we would give cheerfully with a cheerful heart in a point of our country's um, history, Lord, when we want to hold tight and be protective and make sure that we're secure, Lord, help us to relinquish that control and to give, to give not only of our finances, uh, but to give of our words of encouragement, to give of our sunny disposition, to give of our hope, to give of our time, to give um, when we really don't want to. More, let us not change as our circumstances change and our culture change. May we continue to be a people of hope and a faith that you will save us when we call out to you. We thank you for this opportunity to come together and worship in your holy name. Amen. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we want to know you more and more.
tears And when you move You move all our fears And when you move You move us to tears And when you fall We fall Well, good morning. I'm glad to be back with you, uh, at least online. Uh, I want to thank everybody for uh, all of their uh, well wishes and prayers and support. Um, the last few days have been, this is Wednesday that I'm recording this, and the last few days have been a bit rough, but um, I'm hoping that we're on the tail end of this. And so, uh, But I'm glad to be back with you and bringing this message to you uh, this morning. 
So uh, this morning we are continuing our sermon series based on Claire de Graff's book, The Ten Second Rule. And we're looking at how the simple but challenging practice of doing the next uh, thing you're reasonably certain Jesus wants you to do and doing it within the next 10 seconds and how that can move us to a new level in our relationship with God and with other people. Now, if you recall, last week I introduced you to the concept of the 10 second rule and I invited you to take up the challenge along with me um, to, to do this. Uh, and so this week, uh, we're going to talk about the voices in our heads, and we're going to look at that scripture from Proverbs 2, 1 through 7. So if you've got your Bibles with you, I want to invite you to open to Proverbs 2, 1 through 7. My child, if you, if you accept my words and treasure up my commandments within you, making your ear attentive to wisdom, and inclining your heart to understanding. If you indeed cry out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding, and he stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk blamelessly. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, the book of Proverbs is a book of sayings written to lift and to encourage the accumulation of wisdom. And having wisdom separates those who do well in life from those who do not. Now, the tone of Proverbs is much more positive and even rosy compared with other wisdom books like Job or Lamentations. And Proverbs gives the, the viewpoint that the, the real value of cultivating a life spent pursuing wisdom is, uh, is the, it's the deeper appreciation that we gain for God. And it's the immersion that we make into the presence of God. Now, wisdom and God's word and instruction are, are intrinsically linked. We see that throughout the Bible. And, and it's the wisdom that we have in, in God's word that we are to center our life around. In fact, we see that in other wisdom literature like the Psalms. And uh, for instance, the very first Psalm, Psalm 1, 1 through 2. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. Now, in our passage this morning, there's a, a movement that takes place in this passage. You know, if we accept, treasure, be attentive, incline our hearts, cry out, raise our voices, seek after, and search for wisdom, then God will give us the wisdom that we seek, which is connected to the fear and awe of the Lord. In fact, it is God, as the passage says, that brings wisdom forth from his mouth. And God is the author of all true wisdom. But God gives us responsibility in how we listen for it. And this passage is, is full of words that, that remind us that seeking wisdom also requires us to be intentional. <clears throat> now, at the outset, I uh, showed you a time-lapse video of a violinist playing in the middle of a bustling subway station. Uh, that video is um, part of a project that in 2007, the world-renowned classical violinist Joshua Bell participated in, along with the Washington Post. And so uh, Bell was uh, bused at the uh, Washington, D.C. metro station during commuter rush. 
And what the Washington Post wanted to see is if people recognized or paid attention to the quality of the performance they were hearing. Now, what happened is maybe not that surprising to us. See, during the time uh, Joshua Bell was performing, he had only 27 people give him money for his playing. And only seven stopped to listen. So he earned a whopping $52.17. With $20 of that being from the one fan of classical music who actually did recognize him. Now, Bell's experiment is a demonstration on how hard it is for us to both hear and recognize something special or important, especially in the daily grind of our everyday tasks, responsibilities, and concerns. How much more difficult is it for us to hear the voice of our Creator, the voice of truth in the rush of our lives? And in addition to our constant enemy hurry, when do we when we do receive an impression or a nudge to do something, there's also those other voices that we hear. And Claire de Graff in his book calls these dueling voices. He says that when we receive an impression that we are to do something for God, for someone else, that immediately after that voice comes other voices that sound like excuses of why we shouldn't do something. And what are these voices? Sometimes they're the voice of the adversary, Satan, keeping us from living out God's desire for our life. Sometimes they are the voice of the world telling us to temper our expectations or to fall in line with what is expected. But most often it is simply us, that part of us that doesn't want to put ourselves out or might be afraid of where following that voice will lead us. You know, we've settled for a lukewarm, passive version of our faith. But what if we could do and be something more? More faithful, more adventurous, more Christ-like. That's the beauty of the 10-second rule, and especially the 10-second part. You see, by doing the next right thing within 10 seconds, you keep those dueling voices at bay before they can pop up and keep you from doing it. In John 10, 27, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. The question is, how can we recognize the voice of God? <clears throat> well, we believe that over the centuries, God's voice is consistent in how God speaks to his children. And God can speak to us through amazing or miraculous events, dreams, visions, perhaps a, an audible voice or a specific sign. God can speak to us through other people in our lives. You know, having a, a trusted group of faithful friends, faithful Christian friends, can help us as we discern, discern God's voice together. For example, in the Quaker denomination, uh, they have a, an actual group process to help people discern and identify the voice of God. Now, spiritual direction is a, another way to hear God's word, God's voice. God can, can speak in prayer. Um, it can be an impression or in an internal voice that helps and gives direction. You know, back when I was um, trying to discern a calling into ministry, I was hearing a lot of voices um, some of those voices were, um, uh, were clearly God, and some of them I, weren't, I wasn't certain of. But what I was able to do was discern that voice from God and using friends and, and other people uh, who, who I had uh, a trust in that were able to give me guidance, I was able to discern that what I was truly hearing was truly the voice of God and not just my imagination. 
you know, the way that, that God most often works, speaks to us in his word is through the Bible. And as we receive impressions about what we should do, um, we should always test what we are hearing with God's word to see if it's accurate and faithful. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17 says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training the righteous, so that the servant of God may thoroughly be equipped for every good work. And once we receive an impression and, and we know it is in line with Scripture, well, then we should do it. You see, the power of the 10-second rule, which is that we should do the next thing we're reasonably certain uh, Jesus is calling us to do it and to do it in the next 10 seconds. The power of the 10-second rule is that it, it calls us to be intentional about simple obedience. The rule isn't a guide for major life decisions. You should not decide to quit your job or sell your house and move into another country to be a missionary in 10 seconds. And you shouldn't answer a call into ministry unless you have taken the time to really truly discern that it is God's voice that's calling you into this. You know, there's some decisions that do take more time more prayer and more words of insight from trusted friends, and more time to listen to God's voice. But that being said, there are tens if not hundreds of opportunities that we miss each week to be used by God. And these decisions don't require us a, a great uh, amount of discernment. They just require us to listen, to be intentional, and to respond. And I believe that is the Christian life, that the Christian life is as much less about the large things that we do and much more about the daily simple acts of obedience. I heard someone say recently that our life with Christ is not an event, but a process. I want to invite us this morning to keep practicing the 10 second rule, to keep looking for the next right thing that we are reasonably sure Jesus wants us to do. And if you haven't started, I want to encourage you to begin today to, to make a commitment to follow God with both our hearts and our action, even our daily simple ones. By following this simple rule, we will begin to see all the daily ways that God invites us to bless us, bless us, other, bless us, others, and in doing so, I believe we will grow closer to God and experience a deeper sense of God's presence in our lives. It is truly a way that we will gain wisdom and understanding. Would you pray with me? Oh, holy and gracious God, Lord, we give you thanks for this day. We thank you that you, your voice is clear to those of us who will open our ears and listen. Help us to become more obedient on those impressions and those things that you lay on our hearts in those moments to do the next thing that you're, we're reasonably certain you're calling us to do. To not argue with you, to not second guess but to simply be obedient and answer your voice. Help us to be more obedient. Help us to be more responsive. And help us as we desire to be more faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. This, Lord, we pray in your most holy name. Amen. Well, thank you again, Pastor Clark, for your words this morning. Uh, help us... Uh, I hope we all go through this week uh, trying to listen to the Word of God in our daily lives. So we're going to close our worship this morning together as we uh, as stand where you are if you can, and uh, or continue sitting and enjoy your coffee with uh, as we listen to the Word of God and, and this song, Word of God Speak.
finding myself at a loss for words and the funny thing is it's okay the last thing I need is to be heard but to hear what you would say Word of God speak What you pour down like rain Washing my eyes to see Your majesty To be still and know That you're in this place Please let me stay In the midst of you, beyond the music, beyond the noise, all that I need is to be with you, and in the quiet, hear your voice, word of God speak. As you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God, speak. Fall down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word. Listen to the Word of God speak to you all every day this week. And until we can be again, may God bless you in your daily life. Have a good week.